Uh, your reaction to this news of this execution? Well, it's terrible uh, and completely unjustified, but I'm afraid all too typical of the Iranian uh, regime at the moment. Uh, the, a, a researcher from Chatham House was making the point this morning that the regime picks on dual nationals, not least on uh, British Iranian uh, dual nationals, for political purposes. We saw that with uh, Nazanin Zaghari Radcliffe. We've seen it with uh, many others. And this is a way of, of them, as this researcher was saying, of them, the regime maintaining the narrative that all their problems internally in Iran are to do with venal external forces, particularly the United States, the United Kingdom, and certain European countries. And we are supposed to be the people orchestrating all the trouble that the regime uh, was facing. Uh, I mean, in one sense, would that it, that was so, because um, we could then, the US, the UK, and France and Germany could agree to stop all this, and, and uh, everything would turn out to be beautiful in Iran. But the truth is, which the some in the regime know, but some are unwilling to face, that the problems that the regime have got, which are fundamental economic problems, problems of living standards, complete disenchantment by the majority of young people and many others, these are all homegrown. Uh, and for example, the alienation of women mm. through the uh, requirement to wear the headscarf, the hijab, uh, on women. I, I mean, I've been to Iran many uh, times, and you see on the street the women um, doing their best to protect, protest within the rules, and so they're, they're not picked up by the so-called morality police, but pushing their headscarf back as far as they, they, they can and so on um, as part of their protest. But, but it's a misogynistic regime, apart from all the other things yeah. that they are, are now doing. And of course, we've seen, um, you know, these this terrible brutality. We have seen women and indeed men going out and, and protesting, you know, be because of women being beaten and, and murdered for showing a few strands of, of hair. But we've seen a huge level of brutality. We've now seen several executions. I mean, do you feel that, where do you feel the sort of uprising is? Do you think that this crackdown is now so brutal that it will put a dampener on, 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 on these kind of uprisings we're seeing in Iran? Well, it's, it, 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 it is dampening the uh, spontaneous protests gradually. But the, the, the interesting thing about uh, this series of, of uh, protests and uprisings compared to previous years, particularly the, the one in, in 2009 when there were mass protests against the rigging of the election, which gave us uh, Ahmadinejad uh, as, as president in 2009, I mean, plainly rigged, but subsequent ones about, uh, for example, petrol prices a few years ago. This one is very, very widespread indeed. So the 2009 protests were principally by middle classes in some of the major urban centres. This series has been very widespread indeed. Uh, and that will be a cause for great concern by the regime. Now, if you're asking me to make a prediction, it's always extremely difficult to predict when uh, a regime like this, an authoritarian regime, uh, will collapse. Uh, and there are very few people, and certainly I wasn't one of them, who predicted even two weeks before the Berlin Wall collapsed that that was what was going to happen. So you can, very difficult to tell. What, what I believe uh, is, is this, that this regime having had a considerable amount of legitimacy in its early years, in um, 79, when, when uh, the previous regime of the, of the Shah of Iran was toppled, and then a high degree of unity during the period of the Iran-Iraq war, which was a war provoked by Saddam Hussein uh, across the border and not by Iran for eight years. And then there was a period of... of relative moderation with uh, presidents like President Khatami and indeed even some with uh, Rouhani uh, more recently. Mm. But what you now have is uh, not only the supreme leader, Khatami, who's basically uh, a, a monarch, uh, there for life, literally there for life, 
running most things, but, but underneath him, a, a, an allegedly elected uh, president, Raisi, who's always been part of a hardline regime, um, that they know they've lost legitimacy. And so they're trying to hang on in the only way they know, which is by brutality. Mm. And this will work for a period. How long it will work for is anybody's guess. Okay. But I, I I think that in two generations, if not one, uh, this regime will collapse. And Jack, of course, a lot of international um, condemnation of, of everything that's happening in, in Iran, but particularly today with this execution, we've had the Prime Minister, the Foreign Secretary have both uh, condemned it. In fact, Foreign Secretary James Cleverly uh, says that this won't go unchallenged. What does he mean when he says this won't go unchallenged? What can the government do? What should the government be doing? Well, what any government in this situation, a British government, can do in the short term is very limited. Um, I mean, I, and I, th I think the, the the language which the foreign secretary has used is uh, well carefully chosen. So it's not going to go unanswered. So there will be an answer to it. Um, there are always demands uh, for uh, quote something must be done in a situation like this. Um, it's very difficult for a medium-sized country uh, like the United Kingdom. Uh, without these days being a member of the European Union, and yes, I am making a point, but uh, but that's that's just the, the case. To do if things effectively uh, against a regime uh, like I Iran on its own, indeed, I would sort of certainly counsel against that because they just su such things, say further sanctions, turn out to be uh, gestures which have no force and so f produce the op the opposite reaction from that which is expected. I would hope what the government is doing is talking to uh, our European partners, um, particularly France and Germany, who are with us in the continuing negotiations about Iran's nuclear program, and talking to the United States uh, about this, about whether there's anything in concert uh, that uh, we can do. But it's, it's very tricky indeed. Uh, and I see that already the Iranians have called in at the British ambassador in Tehran um, to protest about uh, <laughs> some of the language that's been used here about their unwarranted and unjustified execution of a British Iranian citizen. But um, the, 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 that's the sort of thing that will will continue. But it, the most important thing is if, if we could get agreement with the European Union and with the United States, then that would make some sense. And, and, you know, in terms of, you know, our own, um, you know, relationship with, uh, you know, Iranian um, diplomats and, and ambassadors, wh where do you think we should be on that? Well, I, I, it's really important to have uh, diplomatic relations with people with whom you profoundly disagree. Uh, indeed, you could argue that scarcely you need necessary to have uh, diplomatic relations with people with whom you agree, because you agree with them anyway. Um, so I'm not in favour of... Uh, downgrading our diplomatic status uh, with Iran uh, because we still have a, 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 a lot of things to do uh, with Iran. There is still some trade, um, but more importantly, we asked we the, the United States, Russia, China, France, and Germany, and ourselves are still involved in these negotiations with Iran about the reinstatement of the so-called JCPOA. The nuclear agreement uh, that was being effectively implemented mm. until President Trump uh, decided uh, very rashly, but uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu's behest to pull out of it. And what that has done, as all of us who know about this said at the time, was simply to accelerate Iran's nuclear program, because the, all the restrictions that were on them uh, until then uh, have, have gone. Trying to get it get that back is really important. That requires diplomatic relations. So does uh, the trade that that, that we do. Um, we do less trade uh, with uh, Iran than other okay. Western European countries, and indeed than the United States, because uh, food exports and pharmaceutical exports are still permitted under sanctions. Um, and it's that, that, that's important. And trying to, to ensure that. The Iranian people continue to have contact. The ordinary Iranian people see as much as they can uh, of the West. I think is uh, 
of, of profound importance because it's partly in that way that you'll build build up the appetite of the Iranian people to rid themselves of this regime. Now, what the Iranian the, the regime will say, well, the story is encouraging protests. Um, uh, if I were in Iran, I'd be out on the streets mm. uh, to protest. Uh, but so, there, there, in my view, there are many arguments against us uh, get, going in for a gesture about downgrading our diplomatic okay. representation. I'm just yeah. make this last point, which is that the Iranians, for their own internal reasons, recalled their ambassador uh, to uh, London uh, last summer, and so representation at the moment is now on a charge basis by the uh, Iranians, but on a full ambassadorial basis by us.